Hello, my name is Chris, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Speed Test Tracker on Portainer Stacks, which your Docker can pose underneath. So, Speed Test Tracker makes it to where you can run a speed test from speedtest.net uh, every hour or whatever cone job you have in there. So, uh, a little bit about this series I'm going over at Home Lab. So, we're installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And let's get started. So, um, with Speed Test Tracker, it's on GitHub, and um, it hasn't been uh, up updated since 2021. But if you go here and you go over here to Dev Branch, you can see that he is working on. Um, an updated version, I think. So I'm not sure about that, but it seems like he is. So um, this is what it looks like: the UI, ping, download, and upload. It um, it does a speed test with Ookla, so it's using the speed test CLI in the background, and also um, it's using Laravel as well for, for the back end. So I'll automatically run a speed test every hour graph of, of per previous speed tests going back X days, backup and restore data from JSON or CSV format, Slack, Discord, Telegram notifications, healthchecks.io integration, organizer integration, influx uh, DB integration, currently V1, only V2 is work in progress. So it looks like he is working on a version two. So we're gonna get to installing this on Portainer. So I'm going to go over the Docker and Pose now. So I'm going to go on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the description. So go, go to that. And now I'm going to go to how to install Speed Test Tracker on Portainer down here. And then I'm going to go to Docker and Pose Speed Test Tracker .yaml. Okay, now we're using version 3 of Docker Compose. We're going to add services. And then underneath the services is speed test. And then container name is called speed test. And then Docker image to be used for the service. Anything before this that doesn't have a URL, it's automatically coming off Docker Hub. So um, the port mappings are 8765 on the host. You can change this. And on the container is 80. So you can't change the containers port. Sets and volumes. So on the host directory, it's data, speed test tracker. You can change this if you'd like. And then in the container, it's uh, config. You cannot change the config uh, path right here because it's in the container. You can only change the host path right here. The environment variables. So you're going to set your time zone right here. Group ID and user ID. You can leave that empty. Acknowledge equals EULA and GDPR set to true to agree so you can set true and Then we're gonna make sure the log file doesn't get out of hand So max files is 10 max size is 2 kilobytes and Then restart policy is set so it's set to unless stops So if you stop it for any reason it will not try to restart, but if it fails for any reason it will try to restart so that's a little bit overview of what the Docker Compose does. I'm gonna go over to copy raw file right here. And then I'm gonna go over to my portainer and get this installed. So now I'm gonna start on my portainer. I'm gonna go into local. Then I'm gonna go to stacks right here. Then I'm gonna go to add stack. And then I'm gonna name the stack speed test tracker. And then I'm going to add stack on the end. So this is going to be the name of the stack. And then in the web editor down here, I'm going to paste in uh, my Docker Compose, what I explained over in Big Bear Video Assets. Okay, once that's done and it's in there, we can say deploy the stack. This might take a bit because it's got to download the image off of Docker Hub. Okay, now it's deployed. It's successfully deployed. So we can go over to uh, Speed Test Tracker stack right here. You can go up to Editor 
and you can change your Docker Compose if you want to change anything in here. You can do that. So now you can go over here. Once you change anything up here, you can say update the stack down here. And repull image and redeploy means that it'll repull the image wherever it got the image. And it'll be a fresh image uh, like if you're using the latest tag and the developer uh, pushed it to the latest tag. You would go in here and, and you would check mark it and it would repull the latest tag off of wherever it got it from and then it will update it and then push the container out and deploy it. So once you do that, you just say update right here. So I'm gonna go into the container and you can see it's been running for about one minute. So it looks like it is staying up, so that's a good sign. So now if you go down here to port configuration and you can see 8765 is on the host side. So we will replace the zeros with the portainer's IP address uh, uh, in the browser. And then I, I, I make sure you add the 8765 onto it. And then in the container side, it, it will go into the 80 port. So you'll just go to this port on the host side in your browser and you'll get to the UI. So now if you scroll down, you can see it created networks and it created a volume right here. So data speed test tracker volume. Then it, it put it in the config in the cont uh, container side. So it looks like it did do everything correctly. So you can go to logs right now and you can see it migrated the databases, everything like that. So it looks like it is up and starting services. It will take a bit for this to uh, start up because it's got to download the composer files. Then it's got to migrate the database. It, it's got to set ca uh, caching. It's got to uh, set all kinds of things. And then once you get the starting services right here, it should be up and ro rolling so you can actually get to the UI. So now we will go to the UI and see if it's working. So like I said, you're gonna put your con your portainer's IP address right here and then 8765 on the end for, for the port. So we're gonna go to the UI and see if it works. Okay, it looks like it's working. We're gonna get not a number because it's a new installation and there's no data yet. So you, you can go up here to say test again. It'll queue it up in the background and it, it'll show your ping, download and upload. So you can see all tests eventually when you do more tests here. And then settings, you can name the app a different name. You can set the schedule of when it actually runs the speed test. So um, you, you can go to this site right here and you can go to chrometab.guru and create your chrome tab for this schedule. Um, you, you can have a comma separated list of speedtest.net server IDs right here. Um, so, and then show average, max, and minimum on the widgets. You can change the graphs. So download, upload graph, half width, ping, failure graph, failure graph, and show failed test on graph. So there's more settings. Then you can see, you can change what you see on the, ta uh, the table. So visible columns and hidden columns, and you can just move these around. Uh, here's the notification settings. So Slack webhook, Telegram, bot token, Telegram chat ID, test notification. So you can just test it right here by clicking this. So speed test notifications, speed test overview notifications, speed test overview time, threshold alert percentage, threshold alert absolute notifications. There's all different kinds of settings for notifications. So now healthchecks.io. So you can en en enable that and then you can have a notification if for some reason the Chrome uh, uh, job failed for any reason, it will show it here in the, um, the healthchecks.io website. The InfluxDB is to where you can put your config right here and you can send it to InfluxDB. You can reset the whole database right here by s clicking delete all and then back up and restore. So you can back up to a JSON file 
or a CSV file. You can restore from a JSON file or a CSV file. So let's go back to home and see if it has done any speed test yet. So it looks like it has, and we can see that the pings uh, there, so 3.3 milliseconds, and then 842.5 ma megabits per second, and then 892.7 megabits uh, per second on the upload. So download, upload, and ping. You can see graphs right here. We've only run one speed test, so it's not populated completely yet. You can run it again, and it'll run it again and show more graphs right here. But that's how it works. And uh, a, de a default, it checks every hour, and it runs the speed test. So it does use Ookla, so it, 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 runs it, on, uh, it, it runs it from here and on to speedtest.net. So that's how to get speed test tracker working on Portainer. So I just went over step by step on how to get speed test tracker running on Portainer. This makes it to where you can easily keep track of the speed of your network at your home or business. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or need support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our Discord. There's a link down in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.